All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about finding the greatest common factor, or as it's usually abbreviated or oftentimes, the GCF. So in all the problems I'm going to do here, I'm going to find the GCF, the greatest common factor. And the basic idea that you need to remember is, we'll make some more sense out of this, you're basically pulling out the smallest exponents on any common factor, along with that factor as well. So if you looked at the least common multiple video that I've made, it's basically a very similar idea, um, but just a little, a little different. So in this case, we want to find the greatest common factor of 12, 30, and 42. So, you know, if your arithmetic is pretty good, you can probably, you know, figure it out pretty quickly. But what I'm going to do is, is just kind of do it the long way, because this long way I'm going to do it works on more complicated expressions as well. Okay, so we're kind of looking for a general procedure. We'll start off easy. What you want to do is you need to factor each number. So notice I'm going to break down 12. I can write that actually as 4 times 3. I can break 30 down as 3 times 10. I can break 42 down as 6 times 7. Well now I can actually break down some of those even further. I can rewrite 4 as 2 times 2, so forget about my next example there. Well 4, 2 times 2, I can write that as 2 squared. You can't really do anything else with a 3. 3 you kind of have to leave alone. Well 10, I can write that as 2 times 5, and I'm just going to order everything. So I've got my 2, here's my original 3 times 5. Notice if I multiply that out, I get my 30 back. Well, likewise, with 6, I can write that as 2 times 3 times 7. Okay, so now what I do to find the greatest common factor, I start, I basically just look at the very first thing, and I say, okay, well, I've got a 2 in this first part. Are there 2's in the other ones as well? Well, yes, there is a 2. On the first part, the exponent is a, to the second power. The exponent on the other twos are just ones. So you have to take the factor and pull out the smallest exponent. So we'll pull out a two to the first. Then I look at the next number. I say, well, okay, there's a three in there. Well, and now I think, are there threes in all the other ones as well? Well, there's a three in the second part, there's a three in the third part, <clears throat> excuse me. They're all to the same exponent of three, so that means I can pull out a three to the first. And then we're done. I mean, you notice there's a five and a seven left over, but there's no five or seven in the first part. So this is your greatest common factor. Two to the first times three to the first, which equivalently is six. And if you think about it, six is the biggest number that goes into 12, 30, and 42. Okay, <clears throat> so what if we have a bigger number? Okay, well maybe your arithmetic gets a little hard, you know, the arithmetic's a little harder here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start factoring this. Well, I notice 124 is even, so you can write that as 2 times 62. Uh, 212 is also even, so I can at least write that as 2 times 106. So here's my original 2 from the first part. I can break down 62 again, that's 2 times 31. Here's my original 2. I can break down 106 as 2 times 53. And at this point, you can stop. Um, 31, it turns out, is actually a prime number. So you can't break 31 down any further. Even if 53 could be broken down further, it really is irrelevant um, because however you split it up, you're not going to get any new factors that are in common. So I can write this as 2 squared times 31. I have 2 squared times 53. Again, I do the same thing to find my greatest common factor. I think, well, there's a 2 in common. There's also a 2 here. I pull out the smaller exponent, but, well, they're both to a power of 2. So I can pull out a 2 squared. And then 31 doesn't factor down any further. So you're basically done at this point. It says the greatest common factor of 124 and 212 is just simply the number 4. So those are both pretty big numbers. It feels like intuitively there should be something bigger that goes into them, but it turns out that 4 is the greatest common factor. So let me step through and do a couple others here. 
So in this case, now we've got some variables, but the idea is exactly the same. Okay, so in this part, um, I look at my first, I've got x cubed y squared z to the fourth, that's one term. I've got x to the fourth z squared, that's another, and then y cubed x to the fifth. So I basically just look at my very first one, I say, okay, there's an x in there, and hey, there's an x in the second one, and there's also an x in the third one. Well, the x on the first one is a power of 3, the second one's a power of 4, and a power of 5. That means I have to keep the smallest power. So I'm going to pull out an x to the third power. And then I go to my next part. I see a y in here, but there's no y in the second term. So that means you cannot, there's no, there's no y's that you pull out to include in the greatest common factor. And if you notice the same thing with the z's, well, there's a z in the first one, there's a z in the second one, but there's no z's in the last one. So it turns out for those original three expressions, x cubed is going to be your greatest common factor. <clears throat> okay, so hey, well now there's numbers thrown in there as well. That's okay. I'm going to factor 8. You can actually factor 8 as 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 cubed and then I'm going to leave my x squared y to the third alone. You can rewrite 12 as 4 times 3, but that's 2 squared times 3. Then I have x to the third, y to the fifth still hanging out there. And I'm going to do the same thing with 36. You can write that as 9 times 4. Well, 4 is 2 squared. 9 is 3 squared. And then I still have x to the first, y to the fourth. Okay. So if you weren't, you know, if you're not able to jump to this factorization, certainly, you know, write them down. I'm just trying to save us a little bit of time here so I can do a couple more examples. Okay, I look at my first one. I see that there's a 2 in there. There's a 2 in the second one. There's a 2 in the last one. Again, you have to pull out the smallest power. But notice the smallest powers on the two are 2s. So that means my greatest common factor is going to involve a 2 squared. Then I look at my next one. Well, there's an x in the first one. There's an x in the second one. There's an x in the third one. I look at the powers. I've got a 2, a 3, and a 1. So I have to pull out the smallest power again. So I'm going to pull out an x to the first. And then, again, same idea. I look at my y's. Okay, there's a y in the first one, a y in the second one, a y in the third one. I look at the powers, there's a power of 3, a power of 5, and a power of 4. So that means I have to pull out that smallest power, which is a 3. So I'm going to also have a y to the third. So the greatest common factor here is 4 times x times y to the third. Let's see if we can't do another couple here real quick. So same idea, okay, now you have things in parentheses, but it's the same idea. You've got an x plus 2 to the third, an x to the fourth, a 2x minus 1 to the seventh, and then you have x plus 2 squared, and 2x minus 1 to the fourth. You just play the same game. So I see an x plus 2 in the first part. I see an x plus 2 in the second part. I look at the smallest exponent, which is to the third power. So my greatest common factor is going to involve an x plus 2 to the third power. And now I see an x raised to a power, but notice in the second part there's no simply x's raised to powers, so that means you can't pull out any x's. I look at my next part, I see a 2x minus 1. Oh, there's a 2x minus 1 in the other one as well. I see a power of 7, I see a power of 4. Again, we've got to pull out the smallest power. So you'll have pull out 2x minus 1 to the fourth, and again, that'll be your greatest common factor. Let's do one more here. So x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 5x plus 6. So on these problems, the basic idea is, and all the other examples, is they were already factored. Well, you can factor x squared minus 4 as x plus 2 times x minus 2. You can factor x squared plus 5x plus 6 as x plus 2, x plus 3. And now I'm back to my example like before. I see there's an x plus 2 in both of them. That means you can factor out an x plus 2. 
and then I see there's an x minus 2 but no x minus 2's in the other so that's going to be your greatest common factor simply an x plus 2 alright I hope these basic examples help I hope I didn't step through the last ones too quickly um, feel free to take a look at my website if you need to see some least common multiple stuff or if you want to see some more examples of these just let me know I'll be happy to try to get to them